What makes a good paramedic is the commitment. And the amazing thing about Medic One is they are committed to bringing every ounce of energy, tool, medical modality to bear to our community. The training we received through the paramedic training program that was provided to us by the Medic One Foundation is what allows every single one of us to do the job we need to do, to help save people's lives, and it's from the citizens, the firefighters, the paramedics, doctors, it goes all the way up the chain. It all comes from the Medic One Foundation. The unique aspect of the Medic One program here in King County is that we have training in the rigs with senior paramedics from nearly day one. Each day in class, we learn a new skill, and that night on the rig, we go out and practice it over and over and over. We practice those skills until we're very good at them, until we can do them in the dark and in the rain and with limited equipment. And that's the difference. We get to make the difference. We, we are privileged to make a difference in somebody's life. Stephanie and I signed up for the half marathon here in Seattle for the St. Jane run. During the half marathon, she did go ahead of me. She looked great, wasn't that far behind her. I came across the finish line after she did. And then someone from the race approached me. And that's when I was told that she crossed the finish line. She had a heart attack. She did not have a heartbeat. I was riding on Medic 18 that day, and we responded down to Gasworks Park. And my understanding and the report given to me by the EMTs on scene was that she had crossed the finish line and then suddenly collapsed. They responded almost immediately. They were staged at the finish line. They initiated CPR and called for additional resources. On my arrival, she had some electrical activity in her heart, but no pulse. So when we got to Harborview, we ran into the emergency room and went up to the desk. And he said, there will be a social worker out to see you. My husband's face was totally gray. And he says to me, I think we're too late. And I still remember saying, no, no, we're not too late. We can't be too late. I felt helpless, just praying thinking about the hardship for her parents and her children. Those kids, you know, have already lost a father. They're not losing a mother. You know, that was something that really hit me hard with Stephanie because I knew how much she loves her children and how much she has done for them. I have had total memory loss um, prior to the cardiac arrest, and there's a lot of things that, that I don't remember, but people have just said, you know, hey, you're here, you survived. Probably one of the hardest things is thinking about, oh my gosh, what if the kids didn't have me around, I'm their only parent. It was a hard time for them to go through, and it's unimaginable. You know, I can't imagine losing a child, and I can't imagine a child losing their parents. as young firefighters come up with the enthusiasm and the intelligence to become paramedics. They need that funding so that they can get the training that they need to go out into our community and make the world a better place. It's what they all want to do. We just have to provide that avenue for them. The training I have received has given me an extreme amount of confidence because I know I have the skills and ability to handle it. I mean, I think we're all proud to wear this white shirt and be one of these guys. I would love to say a heartfelt and, and deep in my heart, thank you. I'm just happy to be, to be living, to be able to take a breath. It's a blessing to be here and still be alive and, and have a second chance. I would challenge a donor to find another investment in life that pays back more than what you gave. Because truly, the, the dollar or whatever it is that you gave, you will receive tenfold in contribution to your community. It matters.
It just matters.